You're part of Jared's big local farmer and support group that are a large, they've made a huge contribution to um, Jared and CJ loving living in the Martinborough area, but also have made a huge contribution to this book. Um, I want to explain a little bit about how books come to publishers. We have a thing, an infamous thing called the slush pile, which is essentially manuscripts that authors send into us unsolicited, hoping that it might turn into a book. And I would say that 99.99% of times that never ever happens. But one day, an absolutely fantastic book turned up, and it was Jared's manuscript. And the moment I started reading it, I knew that here was something really special, a really magical, clever, different, thoughtful voice. And I showed it around the team, which is what we do, and everyone just loved it, and we knew that it was a book that we just had to publish. Um, because Jared had spent so much time developing the manuscript before we got hold of it, there was very little that we had to do on it, which again is incredibly unusual in the world of publishing. It was pretty much word perfect, really. I think we nipped and tucked here and there. Um, and I suppose as we got closer to production stage, we thought about how should the book look? Because the book is full of not only amazing Martinborough people, but it's full of amazing Martinborough animals. I mean, they're part of the cast and crew just as much as everyone else. And we had, a, I guess we, saw, we, we knew we wanted to illustrate it, but weren't sure how we were going to go about that until, we had, until Jared had the great idea that we should invite um, Greg Keith, who does, has done um, Jared's um, olive oil label to illustrate the book. So it is full, as you will see shortly, of absolutely enchanting line drawings of sheep and pigs and cows and tractors and grapes and all sorts of wonderful things. So inside this book is an absolutely hilarious story of two guys who, as Jared admits, could barely cook. They're coming up to Martin Moran. <laughs> <laughs> the chances were they were not going to survive. And really, how they, they survived thanks to many of the people in this room. And you will read about these people in this book. They're all cunningly disguised with non diphthongs but I'm sure it won't take you very long to figure out who some of them are. Um, it's just an absolutely gorgeous, wry tale. It goes on sale this week. It's already had fabulous reviews and we just we know that this book is going to rock it out of the shops because it's just so special and so charming. So wanted to thank Jared for being an absolutely amazing and wonderful author. Wanted to thank CJ for supporting Jared because it's never easy actually to be the partner of an author. They're very anxious. <laughs> finally, finally <laughs> the room where the book will be for sale, as, as well as oil and beautiful tea towels that um, Greg has, uh, has made. Jared will be very happy to sign the book, but there will also be this book on the signing table, and this is the launch copy of the book, and what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to sign it, so that Jared can then keep it afterwards as a memory of tonight and everyone who came. So please do sign it, you can write on whatever page you want, you can have all sorts of messages, but please do take the opportunity of doing that. So I just wanted to thank you again and wanted to pass you over now to our fabulous author, Jared. Um, I don't like events like this. <laughs> they make me really nervous when I'm the center of attention. And so I'm nervous right now. Um, but I remind myself that, that I'm with people who really helped us to survive here, frankly. Um, they say that, you know, it, it, it takes a village to raise a child, and in my experience, it takes a village to write a book. <laughs> and it took this village to write this book. And if you look around the room, you'll see the people in this book. And it, it really means a lot to me that we have felt so supported since we came here, so it made writing about it really easy, because it's, it's a place I love, and it's people I love. So when I'm writing from a place of love, I hope that people can enjoy it, and it seems maybe people do, and that makes me really pleased. So I, I need to thank a few people for um, really helping out with tonight. I'd like to thank the vineyards who, who donated wine and were very nice to, to support uh, a, a little local book launch like this. So thank you very much to Cabbage Tree Vineyard, to Escarpment, to Big Sky, also to uh, 
Help me out. Murdoch James and Cabbage Road. Thank you. Cambridge Road. Thank you. Cambridge, Cambridge Road. And um, also a big thank you to the Wine Center and to the Village Cafe for helping out with the event tonight. And um, a big thank you too to um, Leanne and Greg who um, of Wolfies who helped not only Greg did these amazing illustrations, but oh, there he's hiding in the corner, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not only with the great illustrations in the book, but also um, throughout our lives here, they've helped at a, at a variety of points. There have been people that I could go on for quite some time, which I won't, I promise, um, who have helped us. And in the acknowledgments of the book, I try to thank everybody who's really contributed to our time in Martinborough. And um, I hope that, that that reflects how much I feel gratitude for the community here. I also would really like to thank my mom and Auntie Mims for traveling from the States for the launch, so thank you very much. And incidentally, um, it was a surprise that my mom showed up. I was <laughs> sitting at home and somebody walked in the front door and said, what's for lunch? And I thought, that sounds like my mom. <laughs> She's in Michigan, right? So thank you very much, Mom, for surprising me that way. So thank you to the community for helping me with this book. And really, this book belongs to everybody here. So thank you very much. And um, I'll do one very brief little reading from the first page of the book. This is um, about... Uh, uh, well, I'll just start reading. There, there's people in this room who are mentioned here um, with clever pseudonyms, so um, <laughs> now look around the room and try and figure out who's who. There's a sheep down in your paddock, Jim the Mad Welshman says over the phone. Jim's our neighbor on the eastern boundary. He was working along the fence line when he saw the sheep. It looks pretty sick, he says. I immediately call Hamish, who leases our paddocks. The sheep are his. Probably cast, Hamish says. Might just need propping back up, then she'll be right. <laughs> cast? <laughs> cast, I say? Yeast. <laughs> <laughs> this, I had already learned, is what many Kiwis say when they mean yes. <laughs> it rhymes with niece. <laughs> then Hamish mumbles, cast sheep. Uh, of course, I say having absolutely no idea what he's talking about. I figure a cast sheep can only mean one of two things. Either the animal is recovering from a broken leg, or it just got a part in a movie. <laughs> Neither seems entirely likely. Um, well, just what exactly is a cast sheep, I ask. Can't get up. Oh, yeast. <laughs> Why can't it get up? She's cast! <laughs> I'll let you read the rest of that story. <laughs>